disclaimer. I admit that I have hired a third party, anonymous ghostwriter, to write this ebook. However, he wished to be remained anonymous and he has given me his full rights to this ebook. So basically, I own this ebook legally. This audiobook is Creative Commons licensed to distribute it. However, please give proper citation of who created this audiobook. Name is Revolver Ocelot YTT. Title of the book Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan, A Beacon of Hope. Written by Revolver Ocelot YTT. Spoken by Revolver Ocelot YTT. Chapter number 1 1.1 The Legacy of Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan. Some figures break free from the confines of their own time and location to make a lasting mark across generations and even half the world away. But very few have the stature of a Khan Bacha Khan. In true to his message of peace and non-violence, Khan symbolizes a lifetime of indefatigable struggle for justice, leaving deep lessons for nations struggling today with violence. A societal norm. This chapter introduces the life, philosophy, and reverberation of Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan, through which we will explore more specific aspects relevant to his legacy in present times. 1.2 Early Life and Background Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan was born on February 6, 1980 in a small village located near Peshawar Valley of British Indian part which is currently known as Pakistan. His Pashtun family hailed from the area that now lies within Khyber Pukhtunkhwa and they served with moderate means and influence. The richness of the cultural and social traditions held by this great tribe shaped his early years as a child for the Pashtun people hold others in high esteem and likewise take extreme pride in their own long-standing culture. Though the era was restrained, Khan Ghaffar Khan himself went through a modern education which sought it for his future actions. Khan Ghaffar Khan even as a child was able to comprehend the social injustices and colonial oppression faced by his people. This realization led to a long life dedication towards social change and political engagement, fighting for the underprivileged and against what was written. 1.3 The Path of Nonviolence Perhaps the most extraordinary aspect of Khan Ghaffar Khan's life was his unflinching commitment to nonviolence, influenced by the example of Islam, the religion he practiced and became individually significant discipline as well as firmly advocated a non-violence or al-hisma as Mahatma Gandhi ex existed when Khan Ghaffar Khan found him back to 1920s. During his time in power, he started the Khudai Khidmatkar, Servants of God, a non-violent resistance. Red shirts following the non-violent convictions of Gandhi and called Khudai Khidmatkars, natural service servants instead, the leadership of Khan Ghaffar Khan and the three values that became trademarks of his movement, missionary, spirit, khidmat, obedience, asai, non-violent resistance, khidam, vi kadam, won general recognition by millions enabling him to be dubbed with endearment, frontier Gandhi. 1.4. Struggle for independence. Khan Ghaffar Khan's unflagging dedication to Indian independence and his alliance with Mahatma Gandhi positioned him at the vanguard of the struggle for national sovereignty from British rule. He worked hard to unify the Pashtun tribes and other Indian communities against British oppression, arguing for a unified India where religion would have no place. Through numerous imprisonments, brutal repression and personal hardships, Khan Ghaffar Khan stood by his principles of non-violence. 1.5 Post-Independence Challenges 
Khan Ghaffar Khan had seen much strife in his life but partition of India into Pakistan and the Hyderabad in 1947 was the most painful chapter in his life. He was against partitioning the country on religious lines and could visualize what violence and scattering would follow. After the division of Pakistan, Ghaffar Khan stood up for Pashtuns and sought to establish a peaceful society in his homeland. His actions resulted in some clashes with the new government and he also served more time in jail and was exiled yet again. 1.6 Legacy and Relevance Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan left behind a legacy that is certainly an argument for the non-heralding of non-violence, courage and immutable justice. His story and legacy continue to influence activists, scholars and civilians the world over. Even while we are witness to an era of unrest and violence, extremism, social inequality, all the more relevant shines, Khan Bacha Khan with a message for peace and service through unity in reminding us that real strength comes from love and patience not by aggression and force but with compassion through discipline inauguration or selfless act the book is intended to be an introspective examination of his life philosophy movements and legacy of khan abdul ghaffar khan his story holds lessons and insights for us in our quest to create a more flair harmonious world in the chapters that follow, I will walk you through how this great leader of men took one step another to mold himself into a crucible which shaped and reshaped destiny by sheer grit of nothing else. Knowing the life and times of Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan, proteges students around his ideas when there is triangle overthrow of each other can give a new face to understand about the great life he lived and will secure the right essence for the contemporary world. Chapter number two, early life and influences. 2.1, childhood and family background. 2.1a, birth and ancestry. Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan was born on the 16th of February, 1890 in the village of Utmanzai around the Peshawar Valley now in Pakistan. He was born into a well of family, the second child of Behram Khan and his wife from an influential Muhammad tribe. Mohammed tribe. The strong quality of Khan Ghaffar Khan's early life was the Pashtun legacy, including faithfulness to accommodating trustworthiness and a requirement for mainly ambivalence. It was a lineage traced hundreds of years back for to a long line of Pashtun rulers who defined their lives by honor, courage, principles and leadership. 2.1.B Family Environment and Values Raised in a home of typical Pashtun conservatism, blended with some degree of progressiveness adapted from the West, Ghaffar Khan was counter-exposed nonetheless to an unsettling combination. Behram Khan, his father, on the other hand, was a man who had brought quiet wisdom and fairness to social disputes among family members. The environment helped in making young Ghaffar Khan a remarkably self-disciplined and upright person. Bibi Maharam was his mother and a considerable driving force in the man he became. She was devout in her faith and compassionate, teaching him the values of humility. Their importance to all others, propelled by the family's modest affluence. They lived well but experienced on a daily basis how difficult life could be for many of their peer groups. This spirit of community service and the passion for justice perseverance was thus ingrained within Khan Ghaffar Khan at an early age. 2.2 Early Education and Cultural Environment 2.2.A Traditional and Modern Education Khan Ghaffar Khan started in the usual way with religion lessons at his local mosque Quran. Quran and classes on Pushto literature but then acknowledging the necessity of contemporary education, his father admitted him in Edwards Memorial Mission High School, Peshawar. In those days, it was a very uncommon thing as most of the Pashtun families did not like their children to be educated in schools run by Christian missionaries. At Edwards Memorial Mission High School, Khan Ghaffar Khan learned Western topics like in natural sciences and math combined with morality efforts teaching him more than just facts. 
this kind of learning was to provide more Fawad Paul with a broad based education that would expose him not only geometric practice but also all sorts of other perspectives and ideas. His time at school expanded his mind and left him with a love for learning that he would have for the rest of his life. 2.2.b Cultural Influences the Peshawar Valley was the heartland of this cultural setting and every chapter in its history from wars to trade with Central Asia all through intellectual interaction between different cultures that met there at various points in time had a profound impact on Khan Ghaffar Khan's view. It did have a past of great myths, history and empires from Alexander the Great to Mughal Empire fell down again, rooted in a history of steadfast resistance against colonial rule, such historical conscious spirit may underpin how people attitude towards endurance and standing up to justice. The Pushtun Bali code was embedded into Khan Ghaffar Khan's socialization as a child and emphasized important tenets such as hospitality, honor, justice, behavior was guided by Pushtun Bali, a code of conduct governing social interactions and conflict resolution with an emphasis on community spirit, mutual respect between individuals as well as equality among communities. These are the set principles these are not mere theories or ideas for Khan Ghaffar Khan. 2.3 Influences and Motivations 2.3.A Personal Experiences The discontentment of his personal and initial being spanned so wide that Khan Ghaffar Khan had managed in setting motives for himself and goals he would fight against all odds addressed them. The experience of seeing the cruelty and brutality never ending by English, British colonial authority initiated an un unprecedented understanding as to how viciously unjustified colonialism is. These evidences cruelly offended and encouraged him to be an agent in fighting for his own people. 2.3.B Spiritual and Intellectual Influences to learn more Islamic teachings greatly influenced Khan Ghaffar Khan's worldview. His natural feeling for fairness and his dedication to social justice matched the Islamic ethos of equality, judicial objectivity and concern with those less fortunate in society. This greatly affected him and then he was further influenced by Prophet Muhammad Non-violence enhancers, it has since become a policy closer to his philosophy. Besides his religion upbringing, Khan Ghaffar Khan was also a product of contemporary intellectual trends, writings and speeches of Indian nationalist leaders, social reformers and thinkers such as Mahatma Gandhi, Rabindranath Tagore and Swami Vivekananda provided him with fresh ideas for social change. These ideas that he encountered kept him in the best belief of non-violence and then there was education thirdly on grass move grassroot movement 2.3.c formation of ideals drawing upon personal experience as well as spiritual beliefs and intellectual influences this is the philosophy that guided khan ghaffar khan throughout his lifetime he dreamt of a world in which justice equality and human compassion would be enjoyed by all people regardless of where they lived or who they were with he based his activism on the principles of non-violence which were rooted in islamic teachings and the gandhian methodology this was the turning point in Khan Ghaffar Khan's life after which he entered into a new phase of political and social activism, going to uplift his people from chains. The shackles imposed by oppressive colonial state structures, the life and influences of Yoruba heritage was instrumental in shaping him as a pioneer whose influence would be felt for far beyond the boundaries of his country. Through the next few chapters, we will dwell further into how these early experiences and influences transcended into tangible actions and movements, navigating through Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan's metamorphosis as a leader of his people, driving reformatory ideas while advocating non-violence. In the history that unfolds of our common struggle for justice and peace in keeping with human dignity, his era-defining legacy burns even brighter. Chapter number 3, The Path to Activism. 3.1 Initial Steps in Social Reform 3.1.A Awakening to Social Injustice The life of Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan was dangerous one. 
but he had a general sense regarding the social injustice and became an activist hailing from the peshawar valley he experienced life under british colonial rule where poverty illiteracy and exploitation abounded these events cultivated a high level of accountability and urgency for change in his early 20s khan ghafar khan decided to tackle these issues by turning his focus towards education and social reform his belief was that all a person needs in the beginning of their liberation journey is knowledge and self esteem the first school he founded was in utmanzai and it opened its door to the underprivileged children of pashtun area with his vision for providing modern education to them 3.1.b educational initiatives the schools in utmanzai was also a very challenging one the traditionalists within the pashtun community were wary of modern education especially one from what they perceived to be a western sources Moreover the British colonialists saw any awakening of a sense of national feeling and self responsibility among colonized people as something suspicious through these challenges the school of khan ghafar khan slowly earned recognition his syllabus included both religious and modern education thereby establishing an educational system which is balanced and holistic demonstrating an appreciation for character building and ethical integrity he stressed the significance of civil civic duty in forming a team for tomorrow who would embody right less for right sake while championing social equity as well as peaceful resistance 3.1.c advocacy for social change he also began to lecture other social reforms in addition to education throughout the now khyber pakhtunkhwa he traveled widely with the local communities working for poverty alleviation literacy and social injustice his winning personality and steadfast devotion to justice made him a favorite among those who admired his hard work The activism of Khan Ghafar Khan in his youth included organizing social service initiatives like volunteer ambulances and schools. He championed sanitation, health care, agriculture and believed that because significant progress had to be made in the material conditions of li- life before any social change could occur. This laid the foundation for the following years and helped him to network others supporting his vision. 3.2 Encounter with Mahatma Gandhi 3.2.8 the turning point the life of khan ghafar khan took a major turnover point when he met mahatma gandhi in the early 1920s by 1920 gandhi emerged as a major leader of the indian independence movement which had grown from its original anti colonial base and was supporting increased social justice gandhi led nationwide campaigns for easing poverty Khan Ghafar Khan was greatly influenced by Gandhi's ideology and how he could galvanize the entire nation through non-violence. Khan Ghafar Khan visited to British India in 1929 and set up a meeting with Gandhi. It was a transformative, deeply powerful shared experience for the two leaders, one that fostered trust and common ground between them. The portrayal of Gandhi as an advocate for truth, non-violence and self-discipline was in keeping with the beliefs and aspirations that alternative definitively colored khan ghafar khan this experience reinforced his conviction that the course of justice and change in public policy is non violence 3.2.b collaboration and shared goals khan ghafar khan and gandhi built an enduring partnership after their meeting they worked together as on a number of programs designed to encourage social change education and political action he became an admirer of the indian national congress at that time spearheading independence campaign the example of gandhi was instrumental in strengthening khan ghafar khan's conviction for non violent resistance he based his resistance on the tactics of gandhi civil obedience boycotts and pers- peaceful marches but applied them to the prevailing pashtun culture and society it was a collaboration that not only helped solidify the indian independence movement but also launched the pashtun sufferings on the s- on to center stage both in india and abroad 
3.3 formation of the Hudai Khidmatgar movement, 3.3.A vision and mission. In 1929, inspired by his instructions under Gandhi and the achievements of non-violent movements in other parts of India, Khan Ghaffar Khan founded the Khudai Khidmatgar Servants of God movement. Khudai Khidmatgar was the name of a dual-purpose grassroots organization but dedicated to recreating social norms and specifically educational reform alongside non-violence resistance to British rule in India. The core objectives of the movement for self-preservation, academic and moral development in order to raise awareness among the Pashtun. According to Khan Ghaffar Khan, the true liberation would be realized only by a revolution of the mind and character. Their motto was service of to humanity in service to God and they truly believed that every bit of work done for the people would eventually come back in blessing. 3.3.B Organizational Structure and Activities a bottom-up initiative, the Khudai Khidmatkar organization worked through local committees and village volunteers across Khyber Pukhtunkha. Followers identified by their red clothes and called red shirts were given training in the methods of practical, practiced non-violence resistance, community work, morals, the activities of the movement were many varied it had stepped up educational efforts creating new schools and adult literacy programs campaigns to improve public health campaigns were initiated in the field of health and sanitation they were set up to enhance productivity and economic self-sufficiency with farming cooperative being the first meanwhile the khudai khidmatgar also carried out demonstrations and boycott strikes to demand independence in general protest against british rule 3.3.C Impact and Challenges Soon enough, the Khudai Khidmatgar movement enjoyed mass participation of all strata and classes in Pashtun society. It struck a deep chord with the masses, offering them humanity and rights in an all-persuasive environment of violent repression or denial of social reform. The British authorities also took great interest in the movement because they saw it as a big challenge to their control. The colonial government in turn responded with high-handedness from arrests, detention and spark repressive measures. Khan Ghaffar Khan himself also severely persecuted, often being in person imprisoned and exiled. However, despite these hitches, the Khudai Khidmatgar could never implement its code of conduct and refrain from reacting with violence whenever it met it up, out upon them. This faith in non-violent resistance persisted. The genesis and growth of the Khudai Khidmatgar movement contributed a memorable phase to Khan Ghaffar Khan's life. It has shown us how organized non-violent activism can stand up to oppression and create social change. The book outlines the intricate journey of this movement in its different stage stages. Strategies used by it for liberation of civil society achievements as well as lingering influence wielded by Khud Khudai Khidmatgar. Later chapters will consider the wider ramifications of Khan Ghaffar Khan's activism for Indian independence. The Pashtun community and international debates on non-violence and social justice in this detailed expedition, we hope to find out how are the teachings of Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan even relevant today in the never-ending battle for a fair and peaceful world. Chapter number 4 Khudai Khidmatkar Movement 4.1 Principles and Objectives 4.1.A Core Principles The Khudai Khidmatkar Movement was founded by Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan in 1929 and rested on a set of values that determined its actions, lending character to it as an organization. Three of the lead leading philosophies behind this mentality were non-violence, service and self-help. Non-violence ahisma in accordance with Islamic teachings as well as Wuhanian non-violent philosophy of the Khudai Khidmatgar movement, they almost never used violence. Volunteers were taught to be non-violent in thought, word and deed regardless of the level of provocation or repression. It was seen not merely as a tactic but in deeply ethical and moral terms. So much that they that many noted non-violent civil action appeared to have followed the morals of Gandhi very closely. Service Khidmat The movement laid strong emphasis on service 
selfless service to humanity based on an ideal of serving others especially the lower classes and outcasts as worship with was a path to spiritual fulfillment khudai khidmatkar were to be servants of god going diligence in serving their communities with all forms of social work self reliance khud mukhtar khan ghafar khan was on was of the view that actual freedom is about being self dependent and not relying on others the movement advocated for self reliance education and creation of local industries the, the idea was to develop a strong sense of self reliance so that individuals and communities can overcome colonial oppression on one hand and be prepared for the future with their heads held high 4.1 point b objectives the khudai khidmatkar movement set out with clear and ambitious objectives aimed at transforming pashtun society and challenging british colonial rule these objectives included social reform focus on addressing the issues pertaining to poverty illiteracy and social inequality was foremost in their mind it aimed at the betterment of pashtun people through reforms in education healthcare and community development political mobilization the objective of the movement was to arouse political awareness amongst the pashtuns and enlist them for a war of liberation it succeeded in fostering a sense of community and cohesion across groups as well as championing democratic values revival of pashtun culture the khudai khidmatkars moved to revive and protect the culture it also encouraged the pashto language literature and traditional arts which gave birth to a sense of self esteem to its people non violent resistance this was the final movie movement aspired to gain freedom from british rule in a non-violent way it sought to show the potential of non-violent resistance and diffusion of colonial legitimacy through civil disobedience and economic boycotts 4.2 key activities and campaigns 4.2.a educational initiatives education the khudai khidmatkar movement saw literacy programs in afghanistan another hindrance to the growth and empowerment of its people as khan ghafar khan called it was ignorance the movement re- responded by setting up hundreds of schools and programs in basically literacy all over the northwest frontier province nwfp these schools offered progressive education as well as traditional types of knowledge with an aim to develop a generation of enlightened thoughtful citizens also the khudai khidmatkar organized adult education classes and vocational training programs for people to learn practical skills that would empower them economically these efforts were instrumental in eliminating illiteracy and creating an educated intellectual environment 4.2.b health and sanitation campaigns another major concern of the movement was to improve public health and sanitation the khudai khidmatkar launched cleanliness public health and anti epidemic campaigns in addition volunteers embarked on community cleanup drives and constructed latrines while conducting regular health awareness sessions to s- sanitize residents around the sanitation and hygiene practices the movement also established clinics and dispensaries to cater for the health needs of these forgotten sectors the khudai khidmatkar attempted to improve the health of pashtuns thus their overall welfare and productivity 4.2.c agricultural and economic initiatives under the new name of khudai khidmatkar in addition to advocating non violence and peace a foundational principle as well as economic be- independence agricultural cooperatives were founded this also involved vocational training camps among these was the establishment of agricultural cooperatives that would enable farmers to c- combine their subsistence sites and poor resources into a form capable of financing investments in agriculture it also supported the widespread adaptation of modern farming methods and cash crop cultivation for increasing incomes the khudai khidmatkar also encouraged the establishment of local industries and handicrafts besides agriculture many small scale manufacturing units and craft centers were also set up to generate work opportunities while saving traditional skills the khudai khidmatkar movement was deeply associated with politics and the freedom of struggle it staged non violent st- protests strikes and boycotts in order to 
opposed colonial policies and took up political rights. However, even in the face of ruthless and often violent repression, these activities were conducted with discipline. The members had to undergo strict physical training as part of their movement membership. Among the most notable was inspired by Gandhi himself related to the salt Satya Graha, which occurred in 1930, something he called the March of Dundee. Thousands of Khudai Khidbatkar volunteers rallied to protest the salt tax under the leadership of Khan Ghafar Khan, demonstrating its support for its nationwide constructive Indian independence movement. 4.3 Challenges and Government Repression 4.3.8 Colonial Opposition and Repression the British colonial authorities grew concerned about the rapid growth and expanding influence of Khudai Khidmatgar, identifying it as a substantial threat to the power and control of the government. They launched a brutal crackdown. This included mass arrests, imprisonments and brutal crackdowns on peaceful protests. Khan Ghafar Khan himself was also not spared during the course of time. He had to go through many years in prison and cruel punishments. Because of these measures taken to crush the movement, Khudai Khidmatgar movement remained intact, which reflects in many ways its principles, principled basis and unswerving character. 4.3.B Internal Challenges The movement also struggled with internal complications such as factions in the Pashtun community and conservative opposition skeptical of its liberal values. Ghafar Khan and his disciples struggled daily to reconcile social reform with respect to traditional values. Large and fairly diversified membership made enforcing the principle of non-violence and more difficult. Violence and revenge, which infrequent challenged the long-term commitment to non-violence and of trained practitioners who had worked really vigilantly at deepening their practice as a way of life. 4.3.C Legacy and Impact However, the movement broke all the barriers and became a force that could not be repressed and left an everlasting impact on freedom struggle as well as society in the Pashtun Valley. Its focus on civil disobedience, non-violence and social change influenced generations of future activists and leaders. An outcome of the achievements from this movement was that it showed what an organized populist resistance combined with civil disobedience could achieve and set a precedent to in non-violent activism in African region. The legacy of the Khudai Khidmatkar Association is still celebrated today as a symbol of the bravery, endurance and intellectualism pioneered by Khan Abdul Ghafar Khan and his followers. The same is true to this day with the inspiration that they bring folk, folks fighting for justice, e equality and refusing violence in creating a better world. The next few chapters will consider the wider significance of Khan Ghafar Khan studying his place within the Indian independence movement in 20th century post-independence politics and throughout as a leader to global non-violent movements. In this multifaceted review, we attempt to illuminate the enduring relevance of Khan Abdul Ghafar Khan's commitment to justice and peace. Chapter number 5, Non-Violence and Philosophy. 5.1, The Influence of Gandhi and Satya Graha. 5.1.A Encounter with Gandhi. Har Ghafar Khan was a devoted proponent of non violence note and in S Sanskrit as Ahisma. His principles and commitment to non violence were sparked after meeting Mahatma Gandhi in the early 1920s. He had deep affinity with Gandhi's concept of Satyagraha, meaning truth force or soul force. Khan Ghafar Khan's personal meeting with Gandhi in 1929 transformed his notions about non-violent action to bring about social and political change. As for as inspiration, Gandhi effectively mobilized millions of people in India to struggle against British exploitation through non-violence and achieve justice. Following his example, Ghafar Khan started his Khudai Khidmatgar movement and adopted Satya Graha in its, as its pivotal slogan. 5.1.B Adaptation to, of Satya Graha in Pashtun Context Khar Ghafar Khan adapted the method of Satya Graha to his own Pathan soil and in a different cultural background. The Pashtun way of life referred to as Pashtun Wali and which emphasized on honor, hospitality and justice also fit well with the Jain values that 
Mohandas Gandhi espoused. Non-violent struggle, Khan Ghaffar Khan considered it as an expression of Pashtun honor and to tool to confront the British colonial, colonial rule without violating their own principles. The Khudai Khidmatkar movement gradually expanded its non-violent resistance under the leadership of Khan Ghaffar Khan. Its methods were peaceful protests, civil disobedience and non-cooperation. Trained in non-violence and discipline, both pure qualities and inspiring a generation, the Khudai Khidmatkar volunteers, known as red shirts to reflect Muslim Christian unity, red rose coat of their white ethnic version, became militarized after severe repression. 5.1.C Impact and Legacy Gandhi and Satya Graha have profound influence in the formation of Khan Ghaffar Khan's philosophy as well as Khudai Khidmatkar movement. It showed just how powerful non-violent resistance could be in that is that it actually can make political and social goals get reached. It showed that the voiceless masses could be mobilized by non-violent means and stand tall even against mighty colonial forces. The spirit of Satyagraha and non-violence will live forever in the global movements for justice and peace. The Pashtunization of the principles by Khan Ghaffar Khan anchored them that non-violence was not only universal and borderless till it decided to be practiced up on geographical as well as cultural condition. 5.2 Islamic principles of peace 5.2.8 Islamic teachings on non-violence The key to Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan's commitment to non-violence and peace was his adherence to Islamic teachings in the Quran and Hadith sayings and actions of the Prophet Muhammad we are taught principles including but not limited to justice, compassion for humans in their various state, states irrespective religion or background beings awakening kindness into them as if light has been thrown into, onto a needlessly curse, cursed lump. Gandhi and Nehru's teachings filled, filled Khan Ghaffar Khan with uh, inspiration by proving that the, for these Muslims, non-violence was a core tenet of faith. The Quran, chapter number 2, verse number 256, clearly state, states no compulsion in religion. And the Prophet Muhammad laid emphasis on mercy, compassion and forgiveness, thereby shaping entirely Khan Ghaffar Khan's belief of being non-violent. He viewed the life of the Prophet as demonstrating the peaceful resistance and forgiveness were an effective alternative to retaliation especially in times of trouble when you least wanted to go to being peacemakers 5.2.b jihad and non-violence misunderstood as a materialized interpretation of jihad it was the spiritual and ethical aspects that khan ghafar khan's understanding were fundamentally grounded in he saw jihad as a struggle for justice personal development and reform rather than violence at a deeper level, Khan Ghaffar Khan saw the basic struggle as one against human flaws and for reform in non-violent ways. This reading appealed to a greater extent of the Pashtun people by encouraging them to justify their fight against foreign rule with reference from religion and morality. The discourse of trying to say that you shall have more jihad and do nothing else but jihadi struggle because the word jihad is so pervasive in public tongue once he has been able with all his going even by 15 August when Indian flag had gone up for full control over since it under British rule while here hitherto before then no hand would raise near anyone. So Khan Ghaffar Khan announced non-violent resistance as being part of a jihad gave him wide currency and helped confront our scholars who had kept telling us just overview everything lacing their logic on news about resistance equals to terror funnel fed into media 5.2.c the role of spirituality he embraced many spiritual beliefs in addition to his philosophy of non-violence he held the path of true peace and justice ran through some of our most profound spiritual qual qualities we truth compassion selflessness this focus on prayer meditation and moral integrity stemmed from his conviction that spiritual power would be necessary to sustain non-violent protest. Khan Ghaffar Khan bridged his Islam with a full nuanced philosophy of non-violence that provided both him and those who followed him a profound moral framework within which they uh, all operated. 
It showed that non-violence was not some mere result of tactics, but a fully fledged spiritual ethical commitment. 5.3 Personal Beliefs and Teachings 5.3.8 Commitment to Justice and Equality Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan, Khan Bacha Khan personally was believer of, of, of pure justice, equal rights and human dignity. He assumed or may be believed each person had a hurt and should be treated with respect. Whether rich or poor, that commitment was demonstrated in his efforts to combat social injustice and empower underrepresented communities with educational initiatives again by known as a social reform clarif clarify. Khan Ghaffar Khan believed in equality between the genders. He at various meetings asked through the education for education and women empowerment considering them the key to help in improving society both so socially and economically. His liberal views on gender equality defied the Conventional norms urging men to rethink their stereotypes about women. 5.3.B The Power of Education Education was at the core of Khan Ghaffar Khan's philosophy. He believed knowledge was the wellspring of personal and societal change, that it equipped people to resist oppression and create a brighter world. He believed that schools and literacy programs were the best means of liberation and progress. The teaching of Khan Ghaffar Khan was to think, use, the wisdom and faith script in life as base to his non-violent but attractive resistance against imperialist intentions from mankind, that they are instruments used for essential moral virtuous living. He urged his followers to seek knowledge for the progress of society and not just as a form of personal achievement. He laid down the, that education should be integrated, educate the intellect, train his heart and develop spirituality. 5.3.C Legacy and Influence Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan's own teachings have provided an indelible legacy which still relays much pride to movements for justice, peace, and human rights around the world. His staunch devotion to non-violence, peace, and justice showed the power of righteous leadership, non-aggressive conflict resolution, as well as an option of for transformation without violence. The guiding principles and values to which Khan Ghaffar Khan dedicated his life still hold true. His framework continues to provide a foundation for future generations working towards justice compassion. His legacy reminds us that real strength is the courage of convictions, knowing what's right and standing up for it, even when great odds are against you, and the way to peace and justice can only be trod with righteousness, empathy, and unwavering determination. This book will further investigate how Khan Ghaffar Khan's work interacted with the Indian independence movement and his long shadow on world non-violence in subsequent chapters. This detailed inspection seeks to remind about the long time relevance of Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan's contributions towards justice and peace. Chapter number 6 Struggles and Sacrifices 6.1 Imprisonments and Exiles 6.1.A Early Arrests and Imprisonments they had decided to target everyone but Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan, who was the central leader of Khudai Khidmatkar movement and a great proponent of non-violence, his first arrest in one of the nationalist movements led by Mahatma Gandhi came back in 1921. The British, however, considered his rise and activism highly dangerous to their stability in the Northwest Frontier Province, NWFP. From 1920 to 1935, Ghaffar Khan was intermittently Prison, imprisoned and faced arrest many times. There he suffered long imprisonments characterized by severe conditions, physical abuse and psychological pressure. Through all the suffering he experienced, Khan Ghaffar Khan remained true to his beliefs in non-violence and used this opportunity during imprisonment to reflect about it and affirm himself. 6.1.B Major Periods of Imprisonment Peshawar Conspiracy Case 1930 the most important period of imprisonment came when, in 1930, Ghaffar Khan was implicated in the Peshawar conspiracy case. Following the Kisa Khwani Bazar massacre, where British forces killed hundreds of unmarked, hundreds of unmarked armed protesters, it was part of a general repression against member, uh, members and allies in the larger Khudai Khidmatgar movement. Then, after intervening years in prison, Khan Afar Khan bore the burden with his unbroken spirit and writings. 
cracked down during the Quit India Movement 1942 in a march to liberate all of British occupied land in South Asia. Khan Ghaffar Khan was arrested for his part on advancing non-violent resistance against Great Britain during this time a massive crackdown begins began with many Khudai Khidmatgar leaders also arrested and imprisoned. The movement never gave up on its non-violent stance despite the brutal repression this was met with. 6.1.c exiles and house arrests along with incarcerations khan ghafar khan also endured numerous exiles and periods of inter internment seeing that he was influential the british administration tried to quarantine him from his followers and impede in the this work usually he was kept on the move being transferred from one prison to another or confined in remote areas where his influence would be minimized but all this could be not break the spirit of Khan Ghaffar Khan his determination and never quit attitude fired up his supporters one the independence movement his thoughts and his letters of jail reached to different corners when where activists like the Khudai Khidmatgar movement were working 6.2 relationship with the British authorities 6.2.a initial interactions and resistance Khan Ghaffar Khan was immediately associated with pressures and opposition to the British the British colonial authority interpreted his work as incitement to educational development social reform and political mobilization among the Pashtuns is seen harmful which let him forcibly arrested of special concern to British was his capacity of uniting the Pashtun tribes and mobilizing them behind non-violent resistance to weaken the hold of Khan Ghaffar Khan on tribes British authorities also used various measures they did so by using techniques such as propagandizing trying to bribe tribal leaders and weaken the unity of Khudai Khidmatgar movement through divide and conquer nevertheless Despite these initiatives, Khan Ghaffar Khan's goodwill and non-violence approach took him far way down the road of popularity. 6.2.B Repression and Crackdowns For a long time, Khan Ghaffar Khan remained st staunchly non-violent, but as his stock rose, so did the fury of the British repression. It did not took British that long at as it had taken Patans to show restraint in 1947. The response of Massacre Kissa Khwani Bazar bloodbath of Indian independence movement was just brutal. The open fire on unarmed protesters at Sharp Sharpeville was a watershed moment that sparked international outrage and exposed the twisted reality of colonialism. colonialism. In Britain, the authorities subjected Khudai Khidmatgar activists to mass arrests and imprisonments, beating of protesters. However, these measures fell short of stopping the movement which stayed with non-violence and continued to resist oppression and resulting on a major challenge for the colonial masters. 6.2.C Negotiations and Political Dynamics During the ordeal, Khan Ghaffar Khan also entered into discussions with the British administration primarily as a part of bro broader attempts by Indian National Congress. He took part in conferences and talks within the atmosphere of peaceful coexistence so to secure rights and freedoms for his people. But uses were often bitter and fueled by suspicion. The British were unwilling to give too much away and Khan Ghaffar Khan was utter principled about his commitment never to take up arms in the name of justice. In his case, he continued to use dialogue as a way of trying for peace no matter what. 6.3.A Partition and the Creation of Pakistan The partition of India in 1947 and creation of Pakistan were Im important bothersome episodes so far as Khan Ghaffar Khan was concerned. He was so preoccupied with Indian fury, he took the new world order granted for a highly divided state and it made him very hard to swallow that parting legislation. The Khudai Khidmatgar movement was an ally of the Indian National Congress and found itself operating in a different strategic terrain as Pakistan came into existence. 6.3.B Political Marginalization and Repression after the formation of Pakistan, Khan Ghaffar Khan and his followers were marginalized politically. The new government, dominated by party-owned leaders, grew suspicions of Khan Ghaffar Khan's opposition to the division of India. His demand for more rights 
in the Pashtun areas was frequently criticized and seemed to many as a threat towards national unity. Containing arrests, detentions, and mechanical efforts to gag the Khudai Khidmatkars by the Pakistan government, Mochi Gate was the address where Khan Ghafar Khan was not only jailed but his political activity also came under severe restriction. Amidst the trials and tribulations, he grounded himself in his belief of non violence, democracy, as well as uncloaking for social justice marginalized people. 6.3.C Advocacy of Pashtun Rights In Pakistan, Khan Ghafar Khan continued to be a vocal advocate for Pashtun rights and sovereignty. Throughout his life, he demanded more political participation, economic growth, and cultural retention. While his efforts to support education, social reform, and non violence found many advocates among the public at large, notwithstanding a major backlash from authorities. His demands on the rights front sometimes brought him at odds with the central government that took his priorities as an acceptance of its power. Even with these tensions present, he held fast to justice or equality and non violence His memories serve as a living lesson for the movements of justice and human rights in the capital region and elsewhere. 6.3.D Legacy and Enduring Influence The story of Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan had raised an undeniable and prominent page on the history Time written for the Indian subcontinent featuring a warrant in which he was advocated justice against human wrong. Even after being subjected to great brutality and incarceration, his steadfast dedication to non-violent violence bore witness not only the success of peaceful of a peaceful approach but also its courageous in principle. His legacy lives on in the struggles of activities and officials all around the world who strive to eliminate injustice and oppression peacefully. The life and work of Khan Ghafar Khan provide a reminder that non-violence justice and compassion are still an Im- as important today in the struggle for greater social equality. In these coming chapters, we will discuss the repercussions Khan Ghafar Khan had on Indian in- Independence, post independence politics, and how his legacy resonates with global non violent movements. In this long form analysis, we seek to explore the enduring uh, relevance of these reflections on justice and peace that Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan made. Chapter number 7 Role in Indian Independence 7.1 Major Contributions and Alliances 7.1.A Founding the Khudai Khidmatkar Movement In 1929, Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan succeeded in establishing one of the most notable contributions by him during struggle struggle for independence. Khudai Khidmatkar Movement, known as the Servants of God or God or Red Shirts. This non-violent resistance movement focused on social reform, education, and opposition to British colonial rule. Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan could mobilize their people on the strength of a non-violent program was all the more remarkable given that was Pashtun adherent of one of the Central Asia's fiercest warrior tribes. 7.1.B Alliances with Indian National Congress Khan Ghaffar Khan struck a close alliance with the Indian National Congress INC and its leaders including Mahatma Gandhi. Jawahar Lal Nehru, its alliance with the INC helped to rally for independence in NWFP and integrated it into mainstream national movement. This alliance made a huge contribution towards making sure that the cries and demands of average Pashtun men were heard by those in power at national level. 7.1.C Advocacy for Unity and Nonviolence Khan Ghaffar Khan was a firm advocate of Hindu-Muslim unity as well as Uh, as well the larger national unity. He was of the opinion that only a united India can take on British rule. The INC and many outside it followed him in both seeing non-violence as a strategy that worked as well as the morally uh, preferable option to avoid violent rebuke by officials. His life as a whole is typical of the Indian and his doctrines have made India worthy in as much she has at least shown the that appreciation for freedom which makes one deserving to be free. 7.1.D Educational and Social Reforms Khan Ghaffar Khan was also a pioneer of education and social change. In addition to his political activism, he started schools and colleges in the NWFP to spread education among Pashtuns for, has, for a has trade 
behind to lay the foundation for and such as women education and social books 7.2 participation in key movements 7.2 point a non cooperative cooperation movement 1920 to 1922 khan ghafar khan was a uh, part of the non cooperation movement started by mahatma gandhi from 1920 to 1922 a movement to oppose british rule that did not rely on vi- violence and organized with individuals boycotting such things as english goods and institutions laws the contribution of khan ghafar khan helped the movement to re- reach nwfp and convert a high support among pashtuns 7.2 B civil disobedience movement 1930 to 1934 another important phase in the freedom struggle for which khudai shadbadgar is so closely linked to was the civil disobedience movement of early 1930s after gandhi salt march in 1930 khan ghafar khan mobilized the khudai shadbadgar movement to lead a campaign of civil disobedience that included non payment of taxes and boycotting british goods his arrest at this time as well the repression of the movement that followed conveyed the resolve of british to suppress independent struggle 7.2.c quit india movement 1942 since khan ghafar khan was the head of the khudai khidmatgar movement they participated in a big number during quit india movement which started on august 9 1942 a demand for the explicit recognition of immediate independence was adopted at at a protest re- relay by the indian freedom movement but khan ghafar khan struck to his principles of non violence and continued this the struggle against severe repression mass arrests and violent crackdowns his advent during these years only heightened his brand as a staunch unshakable fighter for freedom 7.2.d role in provis- provincial politics khan ghafar khan was also a key player in provincial politics and specifically the nwfp his attempts to win political rights and independence for the pashtun also saw his entering elections operating under the provisions of india P- procedure act 1935 alongside his wider vision of a free and just india shyama prasad dedicated himself to the cause provisional self governance and issues like land reforms or economic development which is which he aimed at solving on local basis 7.3 impact on the freedom struggle 7.3.a mobilization of pashtun community khan ghafar khan was influential in organizing pashtuns generally regarded as fighters by tradition to resort to non violence gandhi success in organizing the khudai khidmatgar movement into unfilled unified and formidable army showcased not just how non violence is effective for various political ends but also illustrated to what lengths peaceful conflicts conflict could achieve 7.3.d strengthening the non violent movement khan ghafar khan himself was an example of non violence who led the khudai khidmatgar movement one that rallied around the idea to be peaceful and oppose violent revolution it was his philosophy and deeds which hardened the principles of a non violence and civil disobedience that would shape the congress party um, along with many other nationalist leaders to follow his appeal was not limited to the nwfp and his message of non violence led scores of activists and leaders all across india 7.3.c advocacy for social justice and reform the stress of khan ghafar khan on social justice and reform helped balance the freedom struggle it g- gave a new dimension his advocacy for education women's equality and public welfare served as a reminder of the complex nature of independence which would mean not only political freedom but also social justice he visualized an india where in honest hard workers irrespective of caste or creed would be entitled to the same benefits and privileges 7.3.d legacy and f- influence the last of the true mahatmas in indian freedom movement his timeless principles and steadfast values continue to inspire movements for justice peace and respect of human rights around the world famous freedom fighter khan ghafar khan stands out not only for illustrating the possibility of non violent resistance but also how the, those committed to working with in a moral framework can rebuild their society the life and work of martin luther king remind us that a non violent organized power may 
alter not only the course of history but also the structure and quality with which change is made. The following chapters are going to focus on what Khan Khafar Khan did after independence came, who he associated with and long pursuit of peace and justice. In this comprehensive analysis we seek to reveal how and why Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan is still relevant. Chapter number 8 Opposition to Partition 8.1 Views on Partition and its Consequences 8.1.8 Ideological Opposition to Partition Khan Ghaffar Khan argued that by artificially dividing the subcontinent on religious lines India would be sowing a seed of hatred in these communities who had lived together for centuries. The partition he believed was a misguidance on the ideology of unity and non violence aspired to during India's struggle for independence from Khan Ghaffar Khan perspective, the concept of separate Muslim state was antithetical to his vision an inclusive and plur plural society in India. He worried that partition would cause tremendous human misery because an enormous number of people will be uprooted and there was going to be violence in the process and he feared it may may create conditions for a long-term instability if not war. 8.1.B Warnings and Predictions This proved Khan Ghaffar Khan correct in his predictions of, about the consequences of partition. The division will bring communal rights that people in any possible can be deported and social order may collapse. His fears were confirmed by a brutal and turbulent time period across the subcontinent. The partition was accompanied by communal riots and massacres and millions of people lost their lives in the aftermath. Khan Ghaffar Khan understood the socio-political mos mosaic of India better than most which is why his warning carried serious weight. He predicted and communal tensions would not be put to rest seeing the division. It was rather going to fuel a legacy of bad blood and conflict which still persists in social Asia decades later. 8.2 Efforts to Prevent Division 8.2.A Advocacy for Unity For a huge part of the time before partition, Khan Ghaffar Khan went around trying to help Indians stay together. He tried to convince leaders from the Indian National Congress and Muslim League that it was vital their nation remained as one unit, embracing all people. To achieve this goal, Khan Ghaffar Khan addressed the masses and used his writings to reinstate his the vision of a unified India in which diversity was encouraged, not annihilated. Tolerance rather than fictional strife. His collaboration with Mahatma Gandhi and other Congress leaders became key factors in these initiatives. In response to the increasing fraction of polarizing militants, they came together to fight back and lay out an India which was inclusive and as, as one. His struggle to save the Pakistan and also his leading target of promoting unity was only possible due to Khan Ghaffar Khan's faith in non-violence. 8.2.B Political and Diplomatic Engagements Khan Ghaffar Khan conducted a deep political and diplomatic understanding for the same mission so that India could remain united. He was a part of the negotiations and dialogue initiated by dominant political leaders such as British officials in order to seek an agreement that would keep India undivided. His attendance in the Simla Conference of 1945 and some other high end conferences testified his wholehearted devotion to attain a peaceful, along with unified solution. It was near impossible to achieve unanimity due partly to changing political dynamics that empower Muslims demanding a separate state. The Muslim League demanding a separate Pakistan to be led by Muhammad Ali Jinnah was singular in its demand and the process continued under an uneasy debate within Congress with even many among them preparing for partition probability. One of the appealing well-meaning among them was Khan Ghaffar Khan but he and his appeals for unity were un ultimately drowned by the overall political sweeps. 8.2.C Mobilizing the Khudai Khidmatgar The Khudai Khidmatgar movement under Ghaffar Khan primarily opposed the idea of partition. Its members were sent to the Northwest Province, NWFP and other areas throughout of India as emissaries of unity and non-violence. They held rallies, meetings and educational campaigns to assert communal 
harmony in the muslim society against the rising pro partition voices logged here the khudai khidmatgar demonstrated a resolve towards non violence and they were well organized in their activism thereby becoming an important force opposing the partition with the rising tide of community and with congress reluctance to deal vigorously against partition along with mckin nations for political mileage by both congress as well as muslim league it was extremely difficult in keeping up the that moment 8.3.8 are dis- displacement and violence the partition of india had severe consequences for pashtun society the division of the subcontinent was so abri- arbitrary that it led to mass uprooting even pashtuns were made re- relative immigrants in territories i they had not been familiar with the pashtun areas were not spared and faced communal violence as a result of the partition which caused huge loss to life and property partition took its toll on pashtun social fabric families and separated and centuries old communities found themselves on opposite sides of newly drawn lines the impact of the displacement and violence which interrupted traditional social relations of at all levels are still a lasting legacy decades on just as for sergeant union in europe 8.3 point b political marginalization the pashtun regions of the subcontinent however were left split and by the drawing borders between provinces in 1947 onwards they became parts of a freshly fished <laughs> entity called pakistan as a result afar khan and the khudai khidmatgar who were against creation of pakistan experienced political marginalization followed by harsh suppression the new government was suspicious and tried to restrict their power khan afar khan demand for more rights and an element of self governance to the pashtuns was never welcomed by central government the need to create a larger pakistan with autocratic privileges and decided injustices ran counter muhammad ali jinnah's visions of decentralized inclusive political structure in this way the post partition period was a disastrous time for pashtun society as mechanisms of political marginalization were intensified 8.3.c cultural and social resilience as difficult as it was pashtun society showed great strength despite the partition the cultural and social values for which ghafar khan had stood that is peace justice with dignity and education were providing motivation to the people of this community aftermath of the partition was rebuilt with immense solidarity and spirit his legacy of non violence and educational and social reform would continue to inspire the next generation his vision of a peaceful and far fair society was continued by schools cultural organizations community groups a thriving resilient pashtun society in the face of adversity served as evidence that khan ghafar khan's value and principles would live on 8.3.d long term consequences the roots of these dangerous tendencies in pashtun society were directly linked to the long term impacts of partition the division resulted in continuing political and social unrest which stunted the stability of the region as a whole setting back hope for development Neither, nevertheless the principles of non violence justice and education that khan ghafar khan had long propagated laid down a path for future endeavors towards achieving a just society in Afghanistan the fact that khan ghafar khan opposed the partition and he fiercely stood by his principles he served as a source of inspiration for justice loving peace movements in the region his legacy helps us remember the power of unity love and resilience over division and hate the post partition activities and life struggle for peace justice and will be discussed in the following chapters along with his extraordinary impact on non violent movements around the world we hope you find this exhaustive review a more intricate insight into the influence and legacy of khan abdul ghafar khan
chapter 9 post independence era 9.1 life after partition 9.1.a initial reactions and personal losses for khan abdul ghafar khan the partition of india in 1947 was a time to test his soul in this all that he bent after the partition of this subcontinent he wandered so deeply hurt broken it was a sing a sense to be betrayed and deception with the communal violence and mass immigrations that followed partition neurology had been profoundly distressed to realize just how president his fears about its catastrophic results were not only a political but also a personal defeat khan ghafar khan was an ardent nationalist who had paled around with gandhi so this put him his followers in a bad way within the new state his comrades and legions suffered precautions by the state as well with his movement khudai khibbar being put through a ringer but khan ghafar khan didn't waver what he pressed on despite all challenges fighting for justice and peace 9.1 point b imprisonments and depression subsequently he was many times imprisoned by the pakistani officials after partition his demands for greater autonomy for the pashtun lands and anger at the centralization policies of the pakistani regime had become a sore point a major part of the post independence period saw khan ghafar khan in case incarcerated or under house arrest during his incarcerations in these brutal conditions khan ghafar khan spent time reflecting writing and inspiring others his steadfast resistance in the face of obstacles and his in dominatable resolve to stand up for what he believed was right made him an icon for many here as well as around the world his arrest was emblematic of a broader fight for democratic freedoms and regional sovereignty in pakistan 9.2 point nine point two advocacy of for pashtun autonomy nine point two point a demand for greater autonomy in the period following independence one of his main concerns was to secure greater rights and autonomy for the pashtuns he further thought that the centralization policies of pakistan were harmful to different ethnic and cultural groups like sindhis baluchis pakhtuns and punjabis khan ghafar khan demanded the setting up for, of a federal arrangement under which more self rule and power was to be given to different provinces including nwfp his support for the independence of pashtuns revolved around justice democracy and freedom he said real democracy would only come when the constituent regions and communities of pakistan would speak to for themselves in their own language and irrelevant to all other aspirations 9.2 point b formation for of the national awami party for this purpose khan ghafar khan led formation of the national awami party nap in 1957 as well the nap was established as a major political force that called for provisional autonomy social justice and economic reforms it united different progressive and nationalist forces of all pakistanis pashtuns baloch sindhis bengalis and punjabis it also signaled khan ghafar khan was not ready to sit on the political sidelines and testament recalled his faith in electoral processes as an engine to of reform the nap's mantra of local autonomy and social justice attracted some people who believed that they had been oppressed by the central government policy 9.2 point c challenges and government suppression the national awami party nap movement faced serious challenges and government suppression by the pakistani authorities the central government felt that the party was challenging national unity and stability by asking for autonomy the nap was outlawed multiple times and its leaders like ghafar khan arrested harassed and persecuted through all that khan ghafar khan and the others did not waver from their commitment to justice for pashtuns even as those mighty winds of freedom flapped around them headwinds of horror it echoed a longer tussle between centralization and regional autonomy of pakistan driving home the urgency of democratic reforms 9.3 later years and continued activism 9.3.8 international recognition and awards in the past of his life the unwavering devotion to non violence and social e- 
equity that had guided Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan since he heard Gandhi in 1920 paid handsome international dividends. He was awarded multiple awards and honors in respect of his principles and achievements, including India's highest civilian award, Bharat Ratna, he received in 1987. It reflected the lasting power of his influence in the worldwide struggle for peace and justice. 9.3 point B, advocacy for peace and non-violence. Despite the advancing age, Khan Ghaffar Khan remained an advocate for peace and non-violence. He also delivered keynote speeches on con in countries all over the world on non-violent struggle and democratic change. Justice and human rights. He shared his message with social justice movements globally and became a worldwide icon for the potential impact of nonviolent activism. In action, Khan Ghaffar Khan remained a staunch adherent of the life behind his, com his commitment to Peshawar College. After learning that by now a very old man had confirmed what he once did against all adversities. He still seemed as strong and eloquent an advocate of peace, justice, and human rights. 9.3.C's legacy and influence. Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan is his profound and long lasting legacy. His life and work are shining examples of processes, non violent resistance, impossible, an exciting instrument for social change. His name will always be synonymous with the struggle for independence in India or a voice calling for justice of Pashtun rights and peace. His teachings and principles have many lessons for today. Struggles around justice, human rights, his focus on non violence, unity and social reform offers an inspiring lens through which to view the myriad of complicated dilemmas facing mankind today. His, his is a life that proves integrity, courage, compassion in adversity never go out of fashion. In the following chapters, we will explore how Khan Ghaffar Khan's legacy contributed to modern movements for justice and peace. By scrutinizing his life and works in such detail, we hope to do justice to the legacy of depth he left behind. Chapter number 10, Legacy and Impact, 10.1. Influence on subsequent movements. 10.1.A Global Nonviolent Movements. The firm commitment of Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan to peace has transcended national borders and still exists in some parts of the free world. This great vision and his actions inspired millions of activi activists as well as some world readers. His program of nonviolent social reform and justice has become a legacy for figures such as Martin Luther King Jr. and Nelson Mandela who both saw in Khan Ghaffar Khan an example that peaceful resistance was not only multi-effective but also morally constructive. Martin Luther King Jr. regularly spoke of his the influence that Khan Ghaffar Khan had on him during his time in the United States civil rights movement. King justified his philosophy of non-violent protest and civil disobedience on the ideas taught by Khan Ghaffar Khan through Hodai Khidmatgar. Likewise, Nelson Mandela struggles against the apartheid in South Africa was motivated due to non-violent resistance practices initiated by Ghaffar Khan and Mahatma Gandhi. Khan Ghaffar Khan's ideals have echoed around the world, epitomizing a major facet of all battles against human rights and for social justice. 10.1.B South Asian Political Movements Long-term and variable effects within South Asia of Khan Ghaffar Khan's legacy on political social movements South Asia has not forgotten. His struggle for the rights of oppressed communities and his ideas on an inclusive democratic society are reflective to the stay in various movements shaping up across the region. His principles have inspired numerous social and political activists in India who are still engaged with the cause of communal harmony and social justice. Yet in Pakistan, after being suppressed at first, Khan Ghaffar Khan continued to be rediscovered um, among the advocates of provisional autonomy and democratic rights along with social reform. The Pashtun Tahafuz movement, PTM, for instance, cherishes Ghaffar Khan's legacy in struggle that is non-violent the liberties plus dignity associated with Pashtuns. The reality that the effects of his idea are still felt gives an accessibility to his doctrines 
and modern political and social ideas 10.1.c educational and social reform initiatives today khan ghafar khan's emphasis on education and social reform continues to be felt in many efforts help the down trodden to propagate literacy especially among women and children in regions that have had a history of lack of even opposition to this human right various schools and organizations based on the educational tenets of his mission are established his efforts to advance social justice gender equity and community based development paved the way for future work in alleviating social injustices the programs are based on the teachings and methods of khan ghafar khan as applied to conflict resolution community building political mobilization and human rights education 10.2 recognition and honors 10.2.a national and international awards khan abdul ghafar khan has received a number of international accolades during his lifetime and many retrospective for the pioneering role he played in peace social justice and human advancement one of the highest award he was honored with is bharat ratna in 1987 the award was in recognition of his large contribution to the indian independence movement and his lifelong work for non violence world peace and social reform made him a leading liberal force voice The work of Khan was internationally noticed as well. He was proposed for the Nobel Prize Peace Prize many times and his efforts were supported by peace organizations as well as leaders of countries all around the world. These are recognitions of his universal vision and the extensive commendation for him as a human rights defender, peace promoter. 10.2.b memori- Memorial and Institutions. He has been commemorated with many memorials and institutions numerous schools universities and research centers across the institute which took his name in turn introduce a future generation to these values of education non violence and social justice they remain as tributes to his contribution and continue to act as sources of inspiration for generations who identify themselves with him his life and work are also reven- renarrated in public spaces statues commemorative events etc in addition to honoring the memory and his works these memorials are designed for learning and contemplation of the values he supported in this way khan ghafar khan's life continues to inspire a part of the living social cultural inheritance not only of social south asia but also for global humanity 10.3 lasting impact on social asian politics and society 10.3.a advocacy of for unity and non violence that could be a vote that affected the history of not only south asian politics but also society in general and their lives as well as khan ghafar khan's uncom- uncompromising stand for unity among the people with non violence his theories are often referenced in regards to the ideas of civic sense racial imp- partiality and pacifism among other ideologies in a region so often defined by violence and strife his memory can call still stand as the symbol of what peaceful opposition can achieve this ideal of an open society where different communities could unite in peace continues to be a pole star for what trying to construct bridges between communal divisions and ethnic diversities khan ghafar khan's introduce the idea of reconciliation compassion and human dignity which are fundamental for peace building in south asia 10.3.b influence on democratic movements democratic movements in south asia owe a great deal of their struggles for human rights and social justice to khan ghafar khan his force on d- uh, democratic norms autonomy for regions and the muslim minority remains relevant amid modern day battles with democracy and political reform in places such as southeast asia he was an inspiration for many movements wanting more political participation transparency and accountability right into the present his principles have not only served as the moral and ethical guide for activists politicians or any leader of a mass movement that seeks to rebuild more inclusive and democratic societies 10.3.c cultural and social legacy 
द कल्चरल एंड सोशल लेगेसी ऑफ खान गफार खान लिवस ऑन इन द वर्क फॉर प्रिजर्विंग पश्तून कल्चर एंड हेरिटेज हिज फोकसिंग ऑन एजुकेशन एंड सोशल रिफॉर्म एंड द एम्पावरमेंट ऑफ वोमेन दैट वोट शेप पश्तून सोसाइटी फॉर जनरेशन टू कम द रिवाइवल ऑफ द कल्चर एंड एजुकेशनल प्रोग्राम इंस्पायर्ड बाई इज विशन ऑल एड्स टू ऑथेंटिकेट एंड इनरिच वंस एक्सपीरियंस अबाउट इट्स अकरेंस इन दिस रीजन एट द सेम टाइम हिज लाइब्रेरी एंड वर्क हैव ऑल्सो टर्न आउट टू सर्व एज अ सोर्स ऑफ प्राइड एंड इंस्परेशन फॉर पश्तून पख्तून एज वेल सिमिलर कम्यूनिटीज हु आर नाउ अडोप्टिंग देर आइडेंटिटी विद रिस्पेक्ट वाइल वर्किंग टूवर्ड सोशल जस्टिस The legacy of Khan Ghafar Khan is a clear testimony to cultural re- resilience and the potential transformative powers of education and social reform. As a conclusion, the legacy of Khan Abdul Ghafar Khan is indeed a shining light even today for all those who believe in humanity. His firm belief of non-violence, justice and human dignity is a source of hope for the peacemakers and all those who wage struggle to attain social justice in his life and work khan ghafar khan cannot be edited out of the history of south asia nor the inexorable global movement for human rights and makes us realize just how much principled leader can have an impact while reflecting also on what resilience non violent passion carries still to this very day chapter number 11 personal life and character 11.1 family and personal relationships 11.1.a wife and children khan abdul ghafar khan was married to mehar ganda in 1912 they had a marriage based on mutual respect and they had gone through similar events together they had six children although he was often separated from his family due to his activism and imprisonments they were a pillar of strength for him 11.1.b family background khan abdul ghafar khan born in a well known influential family for of the pashtun region behram khan his father was a land owner and bibi zulaikha his mother helped him to cultivate values he was closely associated with his elder brother khan abdul jabbar khan dr saheb who had also an active participation in politics and social change 11.1.c friend circle he was great friends with mahatma gandhi largely shaping his immense tolerance for non violence it was a partnership characterized by integrity anchored on protecting justice and peace he was also close with other leaders of the indian independence movement like jawahar jawaharlal nehru molana abul kalam azad up front 11.2 traits and leadership qualities 11.2.a integrity and honesty khan abdul ghafar khan was famous for his unmatched integrity he was uncom- uncompromising against even a little swarajwa swarajwa within the heavy repression this was true for both honest and upfront com- communication with followers as well as as well as transparency in dealing even with those that opposed him 11.2.b humility and simplicity he lived a simple life for his influential status he wore simple pashtun clothing and led a humble life he appealed to the common people for his simplicity thereby he led responsibly 11.2.c courage and resilience his courage was the best example of human strength as he had to go and out from prison so many times been physically attacked by his enemies not only once but more than twice yet never for one single time did they falter his determination made him not to be cowed down but instead he continued his activism despite being imprisoned repeatedly and prohibited from moving about 11.2.d empathy and compassion the basic motivation of activism for khan abdul ghafar khan was his empathy with the poor downtrodden subjugated class he had slogged for years to better their lot on occasions rolling up his sleeves and sliding down dirty gutters or jumping battles in support of those he called the real people 11.2.e powerful strategic thinking khan abdul ghafar khan knew how to organize whip large crowds into a frenzy and engage in non violent resistance he was successful in negotiating deals with colonial authorities and other political leaders always looking for peaceful solution to his troubles 11.3 anecdotes and personal stories 11.3.18 from childhood 
divided of social justice in childhood by Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan and the tales go that once upon a time as a young boy even being mindful of justice and intervening to save farmers from getting punished by land lords 11.3.b points to of no return an important choice came when having met mahatma gandhi for the first time in 1928 he took up non violence he made it guideline for his form of activism which he would later turn into the khudai shabadgar movement 11.3.c supporters interaction khan abdul ghaffar khan had a personal touch with his supporters he likes the food in their homes goes there to sit and hear them talk among the pashtun people who are few in words but poetry comes out of those lines he was such a beloved man because of his simplicity and aff- affability 11.3.d cause comic episodes although he had a greater goal khan abdul ghaffar khan was not without humor for example one anecdote recounts that at a public gathering someone heckled him during his speech he responded with a quick well placed quip that cooled the flames and won back the room for him 11.3.e lessons from life one of the major teachings he gave he was a non violence and patience a model he never tired of citing publicly and was that real strength resided in being able to suffer and if need be die without using violence a relatively easy principle for him after decades spent living prior conclusion summary of contributions in philosophy contributions khan abdul ghaffar khan also known as the frontier gandhi made great contributions to indian independence movement and was a great so- social reformer in pashtun ni- region notable contributions khudai khidmatgar movement thousands of pashtuns waged a non violent campaign against colonial rule against the backdrop the new religion laid stress on mass education social uplift and communal harmony a strong voice against violence he stands out for the fact that he consistently uh, almost stubbornly practiced a non violence even when met with brute repression he got this philosophy of non violence by studying islamic principles and being under the influence of mahatma gandhi he founded schools and education for the pashtuns thinking that they were essential to social change and empowerment struggle for pashtun rights he never lost an opportunity to serve the interests of his uh, people and fought on all fronts at every stage in re- subjugation unison india social morally economic politically uplifting pashtuns within set he very much against the partition of india at this time because it would lead to a permanent civil war in these parts education but he built schools and raised the standards of education especially amongst pashtuns due to his belief in educating the masses informing them that it was not only through knowledge could one reform within society struggle for the rights of pashtuns he fought relentlessly relentlessly to secure better social economic and political treatment demanded under a united india he also opposed the partition of india concerned that it would create long term hostility and instability between hindus and muslims in the region philosophy khan abdul ghaffar khan's philosophy was rooted in several core principles ahisma based on gandhi this ethnic ranks non violence above all other political and social goals justice and equality he fought on behalf of the pashtun people for justice and equal treatment under for all men national integration he pre- preached communal harmony and strove for unity among various religious as well as ethnic communities realizing the significance of peace and togetherness self reliance and elegance in general he emphasized the need of self reliance through simple living avoiding materialism or consumer lifestyle teacher he grounded his philosophy of the unfolding future for both an individual life process as well as that of a collective spirit in education many angled or integrated Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan's life and principles remain highly relevant in today's world non-violent action his use of non-violence to z- resist oppression transcends decades and continents a lesson that peaceful protests after has more powerful political upheaval his philosophy has influenced movements for civil rights in the US and against apartheid 
held in South Africa. Interfaith harmony. In a time of many identity-based and religious conflicts, his fight against communal peace gives the mold for constructing inclusive communities. Education to rise above his focus on education as an empowerment tool his still resonates in part of the world where access is not the norm. His work to uplift those who had been marginalized and de- discriminated against served as a relying cry for the contemporary social justice movements addressing more recent injustices, simple living and self-sufficiency. His uh, belief behind simple living that demands human be self-sufficient is in line with the current sustainability trend as well as minimalism, highlighting a crucial move towards sustainable lifestyle. Lessons from his life. Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan's life offers several valuable lessons, bravery and de- dedication. He is one of those men who never bowed to adversity, stood down, stood against what he believed in, regardless his personal suffering. The success in moving minds as demonstrated by his striking example of mobilizing a non-violent movement which underscores the power of Satya Graha and presents non-violent methods from handbook prescriptions to practical tools for provoking permanent change. His resilience in adversity, his strength to defy authoritarian repression and perseverance in adversities over an extended length of period in symbolic life force entity. The value of education. Pratap's commitment to education highlights the importance of featured article in breathing room for both personal and societal advancements. Pattern of the law commitment to justice His unflagging dedication to justice and equality serves as a reminder that for too many people, true rights are at best at an abstraction. Interfaith and inter-ethnic unity, he set an example to humankind through his efforts in building unity among diverse communities, which serves as a model for inner faith, tolerance and understanding between people of different origins. A life of simplicity and integrity. His simple, undaunted life model is a testament to leading useful lives rounded in ethical values. The life lessons of Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan continue to be relevant and can lead our individuals as well as movements for inspiration, seeking a better, just, and non violent world. Appendices, important speeches and writing speeches, speeches. Speech at the Khodai Khadavgar meeting 1930 context delivered during a cru- crucial meeting of the Khodai Khadavgar movement. Key points emphasized non violence, unity among Pashus, and the need for education and social reform. Urge uh, members to remain steadfast in their commitment to peaceful resistance. Address to at All India Congress session 1931 context given at an important session of the Indian National Congress key points advocated for a united India free from colonial rule highlighted the shared goals of the Congress and the Khodai Khidalgar movement stressed the importance of Hindu Muslim unity speech opposing parties 1947 context delivered during the tumultuous period leading up to the Partition of India. Key points strongly opposed the division of India, warning of the potential for communal violence and long term instability. Call for unity and peaceful coexistence among all communities. Writings My Life and Struggle Audio Autobiography Overview. The autobiography provides an in depth look at Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan's life, his philosophy of non violence, and his experiences in the freedom struggle key themes non-violent social reform education and the importance of communal harmony the Patan unarmed essay overview an essay that explores the history and culture of the Pashtun people and their unique contribution to the non-violent movement in India key themes the integration of Pashtun cultural values with the principles of non-violence and social justice letters to Mahatma Gandhi overview a collection of letters Exchange between Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan and Mahatma Gandhi. Key themes, discussions on strategy, philosophy, and the uh, practicalities of non violent resistance. Timeline of major events 1980, birth of Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan in Utmanzai, Northwest Frontier Province, 1910s. Early involvement in social reform and education in the Pashtun region, 1929. Formation of the Khudai Khidmatgar movement, promoting non-violence and social reform, 1930. 
these speeches and mobilization against British colonial rule active and participation in the civil disobedience movement 1931 significant presence at the All India Con Congress session depending ties with Mahatma Gandhi 1942 arrested during the Quit India movement spent several years in British prisons 1947 strong opposition to the partition of India calls for Pashtun autonomy within a united India 1948 post independence activism tensions with the Pakistani government over Pashtun rights 1950s and 60s continued advocacy for non-violence and social justice and education despite repeated imprisonments 1988 death in Peshawar remembered as a champion of non-violence and Pashtun rights glossary of terms and key figures terms Khudai Khidmatgar a non-violent resistance movement founded by Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan to fight for Indian independence and social Reform among Pashtuns, Satyagara, a philosophy and practice of non-violent resistance developed by Mahatma Gandhi, Pashtun, an ethnic group native to the region, spreading Afghanistan and Pakistan. Key figures, Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan, the central figure of the book also known as the Frontier Gandhi. Mahatma Gandhi, leader of the Indian independence movement, close friend and philosophy ally of Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan. Jawaharlal Nehru, the first Prime Minister of India and prominent leader in the Indian National Congress, Dr. Khan Sahib, elder brother of Khan, Abdul Ghaffar Khan, and a significant political figure in his own right, Maulana Abdul Kalam Azad, a senior leader of the Indian National Congress and an advocate of Hindu-Muslim unity, British colonial authorities, the ruling authorities of in India during the colonial period, against whom Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan and his movement struggle, bibliography, Primary sources, Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan's autobiography, My Life and Struggle. Number two, letters and correspondence between Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan and Mahatma Gandhi. Number three, speeches and essays by Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan. Non-violent uh, non soldier of Islam, Basha Khan, a man to march the mountains. Nigri Press, 1999, Tendulkar. D.G. Abdul Ghaffar Khan, Faith in a Battle, Popular, Prakashan, 1967. Uh, Pairi Lal, Mahatma Gandhi, Lal Last Face, Navathian Publishing House, 1958. Banerjee, Makuela, The uh, Pathan, Unarmed Opposition and Memory in the Northwest Frontier, James Curry Publishers, 2000 Journey, Articles and Papers. <sighs> Mukherjee uh, Radrag Shu, The Frontier Gandhi, The Biography of Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan, History Today, Volume Number 47, Number 8, 1997, PP 48 to 50, Ahmed Akbar, Pashtun Economy and Society, Traditional Structure and Economic Development uh, in a Tribal Society, Rutledge and Keegan Paul Littid and 1980 Archives and Digital Resources, National Archives of India, number two, British Library Collections, number three, Gandhi Heritage Portal, interviews and oral histories, interviews with families members and associates of Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan, oral history, projects and recordings from the Khudai Khidmatgar movement, biographies and historical accounts, number one, Gandhi Raj Mohan Ghaffar Khan, non-violent Bacha of the Bukhtuns, Penguin Books, India, 2004, Shah Sayyid Vikar, all Ali, Ethnicity, Islam and Nationalism, Muslim Politics in the Northwest Frontier Province, 1937 to 1947, Oxford University Press, 1999, Books on Nonviolence and Activism. Number one, Gandhi Mahatma, The Story of My Experiments with Truth, Navajivan Trust, 1940, King Jr. Martin Luther's Stride Toward Freedom, the Montgomery story, Harper and Brothers, 1958, Regional Histories, Rittenberg, Stephen, Ethnicity, Nationalism, and the Bukhtuns, the Independence Movement in India's Northwest Frontier Province, Carolina Academic Press, 1988, Barth, Frederick, Political Leadership Among Swart, Pathans, Athlone Press, 1959, Academic Studies on Partition and Independence, Talbot, Ian, and Garharpal Singh, The Partition of India, Cambridge University Press, 2009, Pandey, Gayan, Nendra, Remembering Partition, Violence, 
Nationalism and History in India, Cambridge University Press, 2001, Contemporary Analysis, Caterji Partha, The Nation and Its Fragments, Colonial and Post-Colonial Histories, Princeton University Press, 1993, Bose, Sogata and Aisha Jalal, Modern South Asia History, Culture, Political Economy, Rotledge, 2017. Together, these resources can give you a solid grounding in the life and legacy of Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan, touching on the broad historical and cultural context within which he lived. The end.